Here's how we can accurately measure volume using displacement. But first, we need to learn how to use a graduated cylinder correctly. The first step is to determine the scale. To do that, we pick two points, like 100 and 150 milliliters. They're separated by 50 milliliters, and we count the number of lines to go from 100 to 150. There are five lines, which means each line is worth 10 milliliters. When using a graduated cylinder to measure volume, do not look at an angle. You'll get an inaccurate reading. You want to be eye level, but don't lift the graduated cylinder off the table. You'll get a poor reading. Keep it on a level surface, and you get down eye level with the graduated cylinder. You might see a meniscus caused by surface tension. We always read from the lowest point of the meniscus. See that bubble or curve? That's the meniscus. With the graduated cylinder on a level surface and you looking from eye level at the lowest point of the meniscus, it's time to take your reading. Use your scale, count the number of lines up or down from a point that you know. 4.1 milliliters. What do you think? Remember to have somebody check your work. Let me see. Looks more like 4.2. What do you think? Well, I think it's 4.1. It's one line above 4, and each one's worth 0.1. Take a look one more time. You're right, 4.1, my mistake. Now that we can use a graduated cylinder, it's time to find the volume of an object using displacement. When an object is submerged in water, it will move water out of the way. That's called displacing water. You can see the original water level here. When the object is submerged, the water level rises. The difference between those two measurements is the volume of the object. But first, we want to know which graduated cylinder to use. The basic rule is you want to use the smallest graduated cylinder you can without the object getting stuck. That will give you the most accurate reading. The smallest one will not work. The big one will give a reading, but not very accurate. This graduated cylinder is the one we want. We start by taking the first volume. That's the volume of just the water. Then we carefully place the object in. You don't want to splash any water, so we're going to tilt it and carefully slide the object in. Make sure it's totally underwater. Take a second volume. Subtract your two measurements. 50 minus 42 is 8 milliliters. Same process can be used for objects like a cylinder or a sphere. To find the volume of a larger object, like this, you would need a bigger graduated cylinder, but the process is the same. Follow these steps to find the volume of an object by displacement. 